Hi there. This video is for my fellow Phi Ed teachers everywhere. Uh, behind me is a homemade mat cart to put gym mats on. Uh, if you're like me and you teach Phi Ed, you like to have everything on wheels because if it's on wheels, it moves much easier. So I made this mat cart six or seven years ago and we stack mats on it in the gym. In fact, we have two of them. Um, and they're very durable. I made it out of three inch PVC, schedule 40 piping, uh, glued all the joints together, and, and I'll show you a little bit more about that as we go. But this cart with all of the pieces cost about $80 to build. Uh, and I built two of them for 160, and, uh, and they've, they've really worked well. They're fantastic. Now the ones that you're gonna find in your FIAD catalogs they're not $80, as you probably look. They're more like $200. And they're not made out of the same material. They're made out of little one-inch square metal tubing sometimes, or round tubing. And they just don't hold up that well. The wheels aren't very good quality. Uh, where I have, uh, I have, what do they call these kind of wheels? Nylon wheels down here. I got swivel ones in the back, and stationary ones in the front. Uh, so the ones in the magazine are not as good, in my opinion, as what I've created. Uh, so I wanted to save our district a little money. Our budget's not great in Phi Ed, like probably yours isn't that great either, unless you teach in one of those private schools. Um, so anyways, trying to save some money, trying to be creative, uh, built this cart. It's lasted, uh, like I said, six or seven years, not too sure. Um, but I teach kindergarten through eighth grade, so I've got middle school kids. We probably use this cart on average almost every day. It's in and out of the gym every day. Uh, and you know how middle school kids are, and they just love to jump on stuff, and they're all rough with things. Uh, but this has held up pretty well. Uh, there is a crack in it that needs to be fixed. And I figured, you know, after that long of a period, that's not that bad, considering if I were to buy one out of a catalog for $200, it would have been broke three or four years ago. So we're going to fix it. And this is going to be back in order and back in shape and ready for school in no time. And the fix is probably only going to cost me about 10 bucks. Still not a bad deal. Okay, so I'm going to show you what's going on here. Now, at first all of these joints were glued together, but over time of pushing this mat back and forth, this joint gets a little bit of stress on it. So what has happened is the, the glue that I used, which is PVC glue, it's really good stuff, it stinks quite a bit, so when you're using it, you're in a well ventilated area. Anyway, the glues come loose in this joint. As you can see, I was just able to pull that apart. The way that I joined these uh, joined these joints up together was I just cut a short piece of three inch PVC and, and glued it in there. Uh, it works well. Now, this, this handle part is fine. There's nothing broke on that. It is this part that has a break. Which one is it? Um, here it is. Okay. So close-up view, you can see there's a there's a crack here, in here, and it's uh, and it's just going to continue to crack and get worse if I don't replace it. So I need to replace just this part. Um, now, another problem is I may need to re replace this long piece because I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get that off. But even if I do, it's it's still going to be about a ten dollar fix. So $10 at the most. All right, so we're gonna get going with that. I'll show you how I do it. And I'll show you that uh, you can make this yourself because it's, it's pretty simple stuff. Okay, more later. All right, so I got my saw horses out. I propped this thing up and I'm clamping it down. What I intend to do is cut right along this joint and cut straight through. So that's gonna leave me just to rein around this three inch piece of PVC. And if I cut uh, 
horizontally like this, I should be able to chip away at some of this because the glue is good, but it's not that good. So I should be able to break it loose. And hopefully what I'm trying to do is save this piece of PVC so I don't have to buy a long extension here to fix it. So I should be able to cut that and we'll see how it goes. But as long as I had it upside down, I wanted to show you how I have these wheels set. What I did is I cut out a circular piece of wood. And as you can see, the grain of the wood goes diagonally with the bolt pattern. So I wasn't able, so I'm not going to split the wood down the middle. Um, those of you that are familiar with carpentry you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but it's, I just think it's a better way to do it. But what I need to do is I need to pop this wheel out. And uh, that's why I got my rubber mallet. So I'm just going to pop that thing out. As it's all that's holding it in there is friction right now. When I put it back in, I'm actually going to put a little bead of silicone around these because every once in a while in the classroom, they have a tendency to pop loose, and I got to take all the mats off and fix them, which can be a pain in the butt. But uh, I think a little bead of silicone will fix that problem. So you can watch me. While I pop this thing off here. Just gonna go that way a little bit. Pop it that way. Starting to pop off. So trying to get an angle out of that. Takes a little bit. There we go. This is what it looks like. Uh, the, the screws that I use are actually supposed to be used for um, uh, metal roofing. Uh, but yeah, you can use whatever you want, they'll work fine. I just use those because that's what I had available. So, this is it. Now, that's just the inside. Absolutely nothing in there. Big surprise, right? Alright, so I'm going to cut this. But, I'm going to use my favorite tool. I call this an eraser because, and it's called a sawzall, but what, it, what I, like, I like to call it an eraser because it fixes mistakes. Just like an eraser does. And I gotta find a good battery for this. Here, I'll put my drill in here. There we go. I actually put it away. Okay, I'm just gonna cut this and it should pop right off. So I bet some of you noticed this, didn't you? When I was cutting this on this side, you noticed it and you didn't tell me. Because a really big mistake I made, I cut the wrong one. <laughs> oh, well, this should teach you. If you're one of my students, double check your work. I should have cut this one off, not this one. This joint is perfectly fine. <laughs> so I just wasted my time. And now I wasted a little bit more money. Still think I can do this whole job for maybe under $12, but uh, uh, not happy. Cut the wrong one. Uh, see, the crack is on this one, not this one. So we all make mistakes. It's easier to laugh at yourself than it is to get mad at yourself. Uh, oh well. That is what it is. Here we go. Alright, so from the top, I'll do this one for you so you can all see the whole process. Again, I do need to cut this one. I know that for a fact. I double, triple check. I'm just going to cut it. Over on this 
side at the same time. Now, so that works out. Okay, where's that chisel? Ah. Uh, I should just take the chisel and it should pop out. Sometimes it just kind of breaks out. that up a bit. Now, I can't believe I cut the wrong one. I feel silly about that, but oh well, it is what it is. So I got them both off. I need to get two of these. Um, I may have enough left over three inch from the first time that I did this, otherwise I might have picked some up. But we'll see. We'll see. I got an idea. I have, I have some out to school too I could use. So it's off to the hardware store. So we'll see you later. All right, back from the store. Got two of these. Could have got away with just one, but <laughs> uh, had to get two. Anyway, uh, earlier I said I could probably do the job for under 12 bucks. These were cheaper than I thought. I paid uh, less than $8 for both of them. So pretty good deal. Uh, I'm happy. Uh, not a big deal, just a little more work. So anyway, now it's time to glue them on. I gotta get some glue out and you prime these things with a glue solvent cleaner, whatever it's called. And then you put the glue on, glue them together and everything should work perfectly. So that's our next step. dries kind of fast so you got to be ready for it. Uh, this is a rubber mallet to pound it into place so it's set real well. Uh, that way I have a better uh, a better joint, better union I guess. And and that's all I'm doing right now so real exciting now you too. All right here we go. Put the glue on here. Real quick like. Real quick. And then I put a little glue on here too. And the glue actually acts as a lubricant. Make that slide in easier. And now, look at that. That, that is nice and tight. Okay. Beautiful. Alright. Done with that. It's going to sit over there. It's going to sit over there and dry. And now, got to get my new pieces glued on. And then I'll glue them. Now what's important with this is that they line up pretty pretty straight. Uh, the straighter the better. Um, what I'm going to use is, what am I going to use? Uh, I'm going to use a little level because that is going to help. So I just checked the other wheel and that's right on the level, so the floor is level underneath and everything. So I'm going to put this on and when it's level, I, I know it's going to be straight. So what I got, a little torpedo level. You don't need a level, you can do it by eye, but like I said, my, a little bit of my OCD kicks in once in a while. Okay, so important that this curve faces the same way. That's nah, really not that important, but it's important to me. Um, hmm. I think I'll put both of them this direction. That seems to make more sense to me. All right. So we'll start this one. Move. Move down. I don't spill it. And go around this. Like I said, it goes sets pretty fast, so you got to move kind of quick. Put this in here, both ends, and uh, be generous with the glue. The more glue you have, the better it sticks. Oh, there's my phone. Okay, now it's on. 
hit it with the rubber mallet. Close enough, close enough for a town this big. All right, time to do the next one. Want to curve the same way, so it's going to go just like that. The uh, blue one. Go, oh, perfect, perfect. Okay, now, now, I gotta put the wheels on. Alright, when you make one of these, if you decide to make one of these, cut out a circle, that diameter, I don't know, you'll figure it out, use a tape measure, I think it's three inches obviously, it's three inch PVC, um, sand around the edge of it, and the best way to put this back in is with a wrench and a hammer, because you, know, you get it started with a hammer. It doesn't really matter because this is a swivel one, it's the back ones that really matter. And put the wrench there and use it as a, it as a tap. It's a straight one. One side, back and forth. You don't need to use a wrench, you can use something else, but this is. Notice the clearance here. Hardly any, right? And so when you make yours, when you make your wheels, make sure you're using a board of this thickness. This would be your standard three-quarter inch board. Uh, plain down, it's like five-eighths, but um, use that. I guess it would be three-quarter. So you need to have it at least that thick, otherwise the wheel sits too far down and it won't spin or roll. So, a little bit of advice there. There we go. All right. Uh, if you remember earlier, I said that I was going to silicone these wheels in place. Uh, so I got a little bit of silicone or whatever this is. It's, it's just this kind of stuff you would use to seal up your tub or shower or kitchen, whatever. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I could use glue, but I don't want to use glue because I might have to take this out again and repair it later down the road. If I use glue, that's going to be a lot more difficult. Whereas this stuff, I can just kind of cut around the edge and, and break the steel, and it'll be fine. I'll be able to do it again sometime. Hopefully, I don't have to, but probably will. Uh, so. So I have a glove on. It's real easy to use your fingers. Just kind of spread that out a little bit. Just gonna squeeze a little bit in here and in there, and just kind of work it in the crease. And it doesn't have to be perfect. All it's doing is providing more friction to keep that wheel on. If I had a problem every once in a while, it would fall out. Hopefully, this just prevents that from happening so. so yeah doesn't have to be pretty I'm gonna see it so, that's what I did that's all I'm doing all right so now I've got this to show you I got it pushed against the wall because I'm going to need to push the handle into these spots and as I mentioned this glue dries kind of quickly so I need to have everything ready I've got this close by I've got rubber mallet. I'm in a position to do this, so we're going to do it as quickly as I possibly can without making too big of a mess. Let's see, I will start with this. Be generous with the glue, guys. 
prevent it from coming undone in the future. Just real quick. Yeah. Oh no, get back over here. Alright. There we go. Make this up. I'd like it to go, but I think that's about as far as it's going to go. Alright. Well, what's going to have to do is that move. It's set by now. I don't want to get it too hard. I don't want to risk another piece. I don't want to break another piece out of it. So. That's just how it's going to have to be. And the problem might be that this joint is a little bit too long and it just won't go any farther. Uh, that's just how it's going to, just what it is, I guess. It is what it is. It's not perfect, but mats are going to be on top of it. No one will see it. Okay, good enough for a town this big. This is done. It just needs to dry and set. Now, I suppose you're wondering what all of these foam balls are. This is not a solar system. I don't teach the science unit in school. Um, these are reconditioned dodgeballs. And if you want to learn more about saving some money on some reconditioned dodgeballs, you're going to have to watch my other channel or my other video. It's uh, probably going to be called How to Recondition Your Dodgeballs or Flyhead Balls or whatever. Anyway, subscribe to my channel, you'll find it. Okay, have a good day, have a good school year.